Hey guys, the objective of this video is to do the derivation of the global stiffness matrix for a truss element. We're going to be doing that by looking at the trigonometry of a typical member. We're then going to be doing a bit of matrix algebra and then just some simple substitution to get our global stiffness matrix. Okay, so what I'm going to draw now is a truss element at an angle, right? So this could be, for example, a chord in a truss maybe, right? Because they're often at angles. So we saw in the previous video just the local stiffness matrix. So that would be like this. So pretend we're back horizon um, horizontal now. That's essentially what we had in the last video, right? We had forces going in, and also we're going to be looking at displacements. So I'm going to call this, we called in the previous video, here's our spring, we called it FA and FB. I'm just going to call it Q1 and Q2. That just denote, denotes the um, the force in the local axis, okay, the force going in, and just also, because the whole point of doing this is to find also displacements, okay, so I'm just going to call this one D1, the displacement at 1, and also the displacement at 2 in the local axis. Now, when we look at an entire system, we don't want to only be looking at local coordinates of just this member, we want to have a global coordinate of the entire system. Okay, so we define global axis, which is your conventional x and y axis. So here's global axis, and this is just for one member. But if we were to have, say, an entire truss, it would be this would be the global the global coordinates, right? And similarly, I'm going to say that the force here will be Q1. This is now big Q, denoting global, and the displacement would be capital D1. Over here, we're going to say Q2, D2. Q3, D3, Q4, D4. Okay, so we're going to be resolving all this now to get our local coordinates into global coordinates. So say we had a force going into this member, how much force is going in that direction and how much force is going in, di in that direction? Similarly, if this were to displace a bit, how much of that displacement is in the X direction and how much of that displacement is in the Y direction? Okay, so we're going to be going to derive all this now. So the first thing we need to do is we're just going to